Do you want to get into the uh, the NHL draft boys before we go to the questions on the show? Sure, you we can talk do that. About the two? So, Mr. Uh, Jadaro, take it away. We'll let the people know who you were taking a look at. All right, so this week I took a look. Well, this week, uh, like I spent a week on it. Today I looked at Dominic Vadinka and uh, Liam Greentree. And uh, my thoughts, so I'll start with Liam Greentree because that's the guy I saw first. I thought he was all right. I wasn't like super impressed by him, but I see a guy who's hardworking, who's like physically intense, a player that battles, like he really does battle, and he can make some nifty passes here and there. But really, the problem is the foot speed. He's just, it's like, it's not that he skates as bad as Ryan Reeves, but it's like, it's kind of slow, and it really inhibits him, like from getting good chances. Like, because there were times where, let's say he had a bit more of an explosive step. He could have had a couple of breakaways and he even had a breakaway where he came out of the box and kind of had a muffin of a shot on, on net and it didn't work out. But like, I think there's a really physically intense, good third line kind of guy there, but I'm not sure there's a whole lot more, but I like him. I do. And then with Badinka, I just think it's, he's a smart guy that moves around kind of nice, shoots a lot. He took a really bad shot, and it led to a, t- a two-on-one the other way that almost went in, and that wasn't right. great. But, like, even on a – there was even a play where there was a goal against where he kind of got blown by in the neutral zone. But he still managed to defend pretty well and then switched off, was good – like, communicated with his partner pretty well. I like him, but those are th- – that's kind of where I, I stand with both of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I would largely agree. I mean, again, you, you get the you get the small sample, which is pretty yeah. fun, the fun part of it. It is a it, small but, sample. <laughs> yeah, like Green Tree is like one of those guys where it's like he's going to be as good as he is on his feet. You know, like that – the thing I love about Green Tree that, that I think a lot of young players don't have is this ability to just make something happen. Like he, I don't know if you saw, if you didn't, I don't know if you saw this in your game, but like two dudes could be clamoring all over him to try to get the puck off of him. And he could be, you know, on the ground, you know, and be, you know, trying to battle for whatever. And he'll find a way to make something happen with that. Right. Like he's never removed from play. Right. Which is a fact. That's a fact. You know, he fights through pressure. Well, he just can't escape it is what I wrote down. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, he's got some skill. He's got, a, I think he's got really good vision. But, you know, like he, he, his ability to sort of get pucks around guys, to pass pucks to his teammates and, you know, make little lanes for himself. I thought he was good at the at the top prospects game. I, I, like with Green Tree, I have him in the mid-teens-ish. Um, I think I have him a little high relative to kind of where I feel about him, but I also mm-hmm. haven't seen him in a long time. Um but my read has basically stayed the same since the first time I saw him. I, I remember watching him at the Holinka this year and going, geez, this guy's like a fourth liner on this team. Why, you know, why? I don't understand why. Same thing with Caden Lindstrom. You know, yeah, Green Tree, I, I agree. Like the speed is not there. It's just not, right? Like I don't, I don't think there's a player I have ranked as high. I don't think I've ever had a player ranked this high who is as deficient a skater as he is. But... I also am betting that he can make up for it in a lot of ways, right? Like where in in ways that I think the NHL definitely will will yeah, he, will, he'll play. will have. He'll play for yeah. sure, I think. And, yeah. Um, like there's an intense guy there who is going to win battles. It's going to be a physical presence, and a guy Bumper who can, on the power play yeah. or front of the net. Like you got jobs there for him. Absolutely. So yeah. I see it with him. He he. It's you see guys like him in the NHL all the time. Where it's like they they aren't the super fast guy, but they can muck it up. They grind. They get pucks on sticks. They, you know, they they they're they're cal- not calm, but effective under pressure. And you know, so the speed of the game doesn't necessarily really affect them a ton. But you still need to have a certain level of pace and intensity and 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 speed in your game to at least be a factor and and again like if you're drafting in the first round you probably want a player who isn't just going to be a fine complementary grinder you probably want a guy who can be a major factor on your team that can do a variety of things really well which maybe green tree could be but to me like the feet are a, are the big big concern but nothing is unfixable in my opinion with Badinka, like he's just grown on me all year for me like he just again like late first round pick you get a guy who eats minutes. You know, I think he's a pretty smart and effective defensive skater. 
Um, you know, yeah, he can get, you know, you saw him get burned a little bit, but more often than not, you just see good habits. You see good instincts. You see him being in the right place at the right time. He has a pretty good shot from the point, which I've been watching him since last year. He relies a lot on that to generate offense. He did with Jokerit last year. Um, but you know, you see a bit of, you know, a sort of a two way guy there that I, that I have liked. I mean, you know, kids in Sweden generally don't play 20 minutes a night like he has, unless their coach has a really good reason to do so, especially defensemen. Um, you know, Simon Edvinson, for example, could barely crack the SHL. He he didn't even fully spend much time there that year. Um, and he was a guy who was drafted in the top 10 and Badinko is well ahead of where he was at the same age, not obviously comparing the two, but in terms of where they are at in their career and playing like minute playing not yeah in minutes yeah not not development not yeah. potential he is a player on that yeah. team so you know for me if you leave Badinka on Malmo for three or four more years you know he grows a couple of inches in the next couple of years you know stays the really good skater that he is and you know, there could be a really interesting player there, especially when you consider him relative to other defensemen that people are talking a lot more about in this year's draft. Yeah, I can see it. I don't think he's I don't think he's that far behind those guys either. 